Okay. Well, we just had a very light frost, our first light frost of the season. And I thought I'd start this video out in the garden today because we're gonna talk about the failures of our off-grid root cellar. And the root cellar is where we keep all this bounty and that's what gets us through winter here in the Midwest until we can get to spring again where we can start planting and start this whole process over again, growing fresh food. And all the seeds that we use here are called heirloom seeds, which means they're open pollinated and they produce seeds. So every year we're saving seeds. Uh, we're also ordering in new seeds so we can try new varieties of things. Um, but this is where everything happens and also everything we get out of here we have to preserve and then save so we had a lot of frost last night uh, we were frantically trying to get our sweet potatoes up it was a light frost uh, but we have more work to do on the sweet potatoes we'll take you guys along on a video coming up where we harvest the sweet potatoes and then let you guys know how to cure those but today we're going to talk about the root cellar You also want to stay tuned because we're going to be uh, trying to extend our season a little longer around here. We have a greenhouse that we operate out of in the fall, early winter, and we're also going to be doing some modifications to our raised beds. Uh, so if you guys want to extend your season a little bit, we're going to give you guys a couple of tips. Also, um, I'm going to walk over this way where the root cellar is, so come on over here and I'll show you another way you can extend your season. And also while I'm walking over here to show you guys this, I want you to understand the natural progression of our homestead, right? Uh, first you'll see there is uh, where we grow our food and harvest it, right? And then we bring it here to the outdoor kitchen. The outdoor kitchen is where we process everything, okay? So it's like an assembly line. You want to think about this stuff when you guys are setting up your homestead. This is important information right here. You want to keep everything close to your living quarters, you know, your main building, so you can keep an eye on it. You know, that's why our chickens are up front. That's why our sheep are right here. We can keep an eye on everything. We don't lose a lot of, we don't lose any animals to predators. We keep a dog out outside um, you know our Airedale Terrier and uh, don't worry if you guys are um, interested to know what's going on with our dogs we're gonna talk about that video this week we're gonna talk about it with you guys and explain to you what's going on so stay tuned I know we've been waiting a second but it's just busy around here ha! so that's the natural progression we'll go in there uh, Stacy does all of our fermenting in there all of our food preservation and then from there uh, we'll take it to its final resting spot which is the root cellar but again I'm going to show you another way you guys can extend your growing season you can also extend your growing season no matter what zone you're in if you need to do that or you could also start earlier in the season is a thing called a cold frame now the pioneers, of course, you guys know if you follow our channel, Stacy and myself, we kind of live like the pioneers did, but in the 21st century, meaning we have a few electric items that we use around here. We're gonna be soon hooking up some solar panels, but we live totally off the grid, which means we're not hooked up to any public utilities or um, anything like that. So we have no electric public utilities, no water, no sewer, no trash, nothing like that. We don't even have a mailbox up front. So in case you're new to our channel, maybe you clicked on this video because it intrigued you, that's how how we live my wife and I decided 10 years ago that we were gonna leave the city life and uh, you know grow more more of our own food we're up to about 90% and we were going to uh, harvest it and our meat and our veggies and everything about it we live hundred percent off rainwater so there's a video tab on our home page if you want to click that video tab you can also hit the three little dashes and that'll be uh, you can arrange the videos in the oldest to the newest you can watch the videos or you can watch every video that we put up but please subscribe Subscribe to our channel uh, because it, also if you're new around here my wife and I are giving away a log cabin uh, if we hit a million subscribers and a hundred million views by the end of the year which is totally doable we're over halfway there so if you guys all pull together and get the word out and let these uh, videos play on your phone uh, while you're hanging out or sleeping or cutting hair or doing chores or whatever that'll help us get there and we're gonna give away this log cabin I can feel it in my bones but this right here is called a cold frame. We got some zinnias in here right now, and soon we'll transition these flowers out of here, and we'll put in some greens, and then we'll have greens through the winter until it really gets super cold. And I'll bring you guys a little closer over here so you can see what this is made of. 
So we had we had a little thing going where we were building these for a while, and basically it's just a tough text panel on top of a cedar frame, and um, I can't really get these zinnias out of the way for you, but just stay tuned and we'll show you more of it later. But basically this is a lid that closes down and it creates a, an airtight seal basically, and that sun shines through there and it keeps this, the main thing is keeping your soil temperature right, okay? You can have cold out in the ambient air, but if your soil temperature starts to drop, then that affects the roots and then that signals to the plant that you're going in, right? Going into winter. So when you have something like this, this will help keep the dirt inside warm, the ground, and so you'll be able to get a lot more production. So it works in the spring and in the fall. It's called a cold frame, and um, a lot of pioneers and old timers, they used to use these, have them right outside. They call them kitchen gardens. Uh, it could be part of a kitchen garden or the whole kitchen garden. You could uh, have herbs and greens and everything in here. So just wanted to show you guys that before we talk about the root cellar. This is the building that we call the learning center or AKA the powerhouse, okay? The powerhouse is the reason why we call it that is because it's the learning center. So when you learn, you become empowered and also because it's where we have our solar power. And pretty soon we're gonna show you guys how that hooks up. And we've had the solar power up for a little while and we've been living here for 10 years without any electricity or solar power. And that stuff's been sitting there and I got like two or three little connections to make and we'll have solar power. And I just haven't done it. I've been busy with other projects. And uh, I just haven't hooked it up. It's been a decade without it, so it's a no big deal. So you can, I have a generator running right now because as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna upload this uh, to you guys so on YouTube today. It's Monday morning. And uh, so if you hear that little humming in the, no in the background, that's what that is. And you'll also notice that that generator is on and it's powering inside there, um, you know, the computer, the laptop, and the lights or whatever in there nothing major yet but you can barely hear that thing run and that's important if you guys are going to live off grid and if you're going to have solar because behind every good solar system this video is getting kind of long isn't it but behind every it's a lot of information but behind a lot of uh solar systems is a good generator okay solar systems are not the end all be all you guys are gonna need a generator even if you have solar power so if you get one, you want to get a quiet one. And for me, uh, we like the Honda generators. They all do very well and they're super quiet. That's a 3000, it's pretty powerful, super quiet. So we basically, uh, we tried some new technology. It's not really new technology, but not many people have built root cellars out of it. Um, some people have since we've made our videos, uh, but it's called ICF, Insulated Concrete Forms, right? So if you guys are following along, we built the uh, basement basically out of insulated concrete forms. If you have not seen our series on building this root cellar, please hit the playlist. You guys will really enjoy it. That will also help us reach our goal of 100 million views. So you guys, the, all the information that we have of almost 10 years of trial and error and learning are all available for you guys on YouTube and even on Facebook uh, for you to glean from for free. It's like Uncle Doug and you can ask all these questions and we probably have all the answers in these videos. We do really a good job, I hope, in bringing you guys this information to help you learn. Uh, so that's, that's our main focus. So all of our videos are kind of always with some teaching, with some nuggets, with some information that are gonna benefit you guys if you decide to live this lifestyle. We put the ice insulated concrete forms in, uh, the concrete went down, and now I've done a lot of research on these root cellars. I didn't just go into the root cellar thing blind. I did a lot of research on it, and all the information that you can find is to have a dirt floor in your root cellar, okay? Now I'm gonna switch locations right now. The sun's kind of blasting on me pretty good, and I'm gonna probably sit down and finish this up with you guys and tell you guys about um, dirt floors in the root cellar, our experience with it, the issues that we're having or had with this root cellar and then um, we're going to explain all that to you in this video here pretty quick and then we're also going to have a follow-up video and show you the remedies to all the failures that we exposed in our root cellar okay but i need to find a place a little more shady i think i'm going to go out in the woods with you guys you guys haven't been out there much lately so we'll go out in the woods and talk about it and have some nice clips and have all this information to share with you guys Ah, 
man down. We got a tree down right here. Looks like a uh, looks like an oak. Come down over my fence line. Ha! So that's one thing about uh, you know living this lifestyle. You'll be mending some fences and stuff. A lot of things we're going to be doing in the winter time. Um, as I'll be marking trees here pretty soon. You can see all this behind me. And I'm going to be repairing this fence line that comes up my back pasture here and over a couple of these creeks that we have. So you guys want to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn about some fencing and how all that's going to go down. But I'll be marking some trees. Ideally, you want to keep your fence line about 10 to 12 feet, 15 feet away from the tree line. Okay, you want to be able to run a vehicle down your fence line so you can inspect your fence line if you're, uh, if you're keeping livestock on your homestead and it just needs to be accessible. Okay, When we moved in, this is how the fence line was here and so we haven't really addressed the issue yet because the fence was already here but now the fence is old and dilapidated and falling down and obviously we can see trees are falling on it. So during the winter time when you know, it's kind of quiet around the homestead, We'll be peeling up this whole back row of fencing, taking down these trees, um, harvesting for firewood and for um, you know projects at the sawmill and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and uh, you know we're gonna have a lot of good times doing that. And a lot of you guys don't have to have this information to set up your homesteads as far as fencing and and all this kind of stuff. And plus we'll be going over some water gaps here, so we'll show you guys how to fence over some water gaps. You know. So, you know, just good information for this lifestyle of living off grid and homesteading. So we put the gravel down in the dirt floor, okay, you can't really have a dirt floor um, 10 feet down. Now I will say when we, when we dug out, when you go back and watch the old videos uh, last year or year before when we dug out the basement, you know, it's bone dry down there and, um, you know, we usually get about 40 inches of rain here in the Midwest, okay, in our state, Missouri which is adequate definitely to live off of rainwater 100% and it should provide enough moisture in the floor for the root cellar, okay? Now when we uh, started to set up our shelves down there, um, we started running into issues right away. You can't really use treated lumber or anything like that, so we went with the metal shelves and then if you do research, a lot of them say you can't use metal shelves. You don't want anything to touch the metal. As far as your uh, food goes, raw food, you know, like your onions, you don't want them actually touching the metal. So you have to put down a bunch of newspaper or put it in cardboard, you know, stuff like that. So right off the bat, we had to put up shelves so we could hold the stuff that we had started collecting for the root cellar. And um, that was difficult. The shelves uh, didn't have a place to stand on, so we brought in some little blocks to set them on. And then so we got them all level and, and set them on there. And you know, it's not too bad, it's working okay. Uh, you know, but that's, that's an issue, okay? Because you want to have good sturdy shelves for all your bounty, you don't want a chance of anything falling over. And also last year we kept some uh, things in the root cellar. And the air vent, the cold air exchange that I showed you guys in a previous video, um, I hadn't finished plumbing that in, but somehow the roof in the root cellar got punctured maybe when we were taking out the framing and because of that puncture it allowed the water to travel from that pipe you know from around the pipe the cold air vent uh, just to kind of seep through there and then it started dripping down okay and uh, <laughs> it started dripping down actually on the table where we had laid out all of our onions last year so last year going into the winter and you know over winter we were having all these challenges with this root cellar um, that we weren't sharing with you guys because we were so busy and we were trying to battle through it and so that all got wet uh, we ha actually had water inside the root cellar a couple of inches of water and then that's when i put in the sub pump um, so the sub pump went in the corner and then i was able i piped up some pvc up and out of there and the sub pump works off of a battery and I also have an outlet down there so when I'm running the generator or soon to be that solar power uh, it'll power and recharge the battery it's like a trickle charger setup okay and it works fantastic pumps the water out of the basement so then we got the water being pumped out of the basement it was keeping it drier all along the base of the ICF forms okay where it connects to the foundation how all that goes together there was always like this little seep of water coming through, okay? And I wanna explain something to you. If we were getting our normal amount of rain every year, I don't think this would have been a problem to be honest with you. 
But starting in like summer last year, so summer, uh, spring, summer, fall, right? We're really super wet, probably more, we had way more rain than normal. And then over winter, we had pretty good moisture, right? So we, ju we just had pr a really wet summer, spring, spring, summer, fall, and winterish going into this first year of the root cellar. And man, we were just exposing the water coming up. Uh, we were exposing it being too wet. We battled some mold. I've got that under control. We painted everything, um, put the sub pump in, and then that pumped out the water. So that was really good. All the literature that I could find, all the old timers that I can talk to, is that you want some humidity in your root cellar. It helps keep your veggies crisp, helps keep them uh, longer. Like when you go to the grocery store, you'll see them misting uh, the veggies on the, you know, on the display. And that's to help keep them fresh, keep them crisp, so they don't dry out. <clears throat> so, it was just kind of a big mess down there, right? And what I've studied and what I've learned is you don't have to have a bunch of moisture. So they say if, you're, if your humidity is a little low, add a five gallon bucket of water inside the room. So when I really started digging into that, I thought it'd be much easier for me to manage the moisture without that floor uh, with just a couple buckets of five gallon buckets of water. So Stacy and I talked about it. Uh, we did more research and that's what we decided to do. So after all this battle with the root cellar and then coming into spring, we knew we were not going to go through the same issues that we had last year. You know, we wanted to make sure we nipped them all in the bud, right? So we had to pull everything out of the root cellar. everything out of the root cellar and we brought it upstairs and covered it up and you know we're keeping it cool and it's been quite a process okay so what we learned was the ICF works really good it does moderate the temperatures much better than just a concrete basement foundation because of the foam it's like a styrofoam cup so any as cold as it is in that room the heat doesn't transfer from the ground into the room or vice versa that break in the concrete because concrete is porous is just working fantastic okay um, the uh, the issues with the moisture once we put the uh, concrete work that we're going to show you in the next video once we did that it stopped the water from coming in around the pipe on the cold air outlet all right and once we put in the sub pump that kept everything dry so that worked out very well uh, there was still a little bit too moisture because of the dirt floor which we remedied which we're going to show you in an upcoming video so we learned that your mo the moisture level in your root cellar um, you know can vary right uh, depending on what's going on you have to you can't build your root cellar uh, planning for like ideal situations okay so knowing that your root cellar needs moisture uh, for us in our area 42 inches of rain a year a dirt floor in a root cellar that's actually in the ground is not going to be conducive um, because it's going to stay too wet you know you can have your stuff too wet now if it was above ground and we mounded dirt on top of it uh, we'd probably be better off than being in that hole with the clay dirt and everything around it there's just no way for the water to escape the sides of the building okay um, but everything is, it has kept well down there and then what in the next video then when we talk about the root cellar we're going to show you guys the fixes that we made okay 
and then we're going to show you um, everything that we have down in the root cellar right now and then Stacy will be here too so she'll talk about the root cellar before and after and then we'll catch you guys up to speed on that so it's all this is a learning experience a lot of you guys are new to this stuff you know you didn't grow up with this I, I never been around a root cellar I did do a lot of I did I did way more studying on the root cellar uh, than I did on any of my other you know ideas that I've had here you know like moving here in the first place or living off-grid or any of that stuff we went into that kind of cold turkey and just kind of taking it as it comes which worked out well for us but I wanted to make sure I did the root cellar in a, in a good way and um, I had a friend that knew about the ICF and that made sense to me I was actually going to put a ice house in the root cellar I was going to cut the ice out of the pond put the ice in the root cellar and then that would really give me a cold storage area uh, but then we moved on with the solar power and that changed my idea about that um, so this is where we're at the root cellar is working really well you guys are really going to love the updates and everything else a root cellar is a must-have on the homestead okay this is where you're going to put all the food this is going to get you from one season to the next and you'll be able to store long-term food storage as well so if you guys are, are canners um, or you collect like uh, you know, like the sardines that maybe you saw in the video um, on our shelves. Sardines are a great source of uh, vitamins and proteins and all that jazz, omegas. Um, and we keep a lot of those on hand and they're super cheap. If you guys want a super cheap survival food, sardines for the win, okay? And then stuff like that that we can't grow ourselves here. We have a pond that we fish out of for fresh fish, but we do keep stuff like that just for long-term um, you know preps if you will survival stuff that we can eat and have available you know because like just recently and you never would have thought it in your lifetime maybe but we went to the store and they were telling us that we could only buy one bag of meat per household per cart per person one bag of meat right so you know you start seeing stuff like that and then you start thinking about your food preserves and how you grow food how you save food it all becomes a lot more important so all right, so that's all I know. Hopefully you guys got some information out of this video, right? Um, just like anything in life, it's not one size fits all. They recommend dirt floors in root cellars to help with moisture. But if you're in an area that gets a ton of rain, that might not be conducive. If you're in an area uh, that is more arid and doesn't get a lot of rain, that might work really well, right? And most cases, maybe that would work really well in our area but because of the uptick in rain over the last year, you know, if I leave it like that, just rolling the dice thinking, oh, it'll probably even out because that was abnormal, then I'm just gonna have these struggles every single year that the rain is heavy. You follow what I'm saying? So I wanna get it to a position where I don't have to worry about it that much and adding a five gallon bucket of water is much easier than battling too much moisture of the mold, the dampness, the veggies, the losing all your produce and all that stuff, okay? So, in closing, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up on your way out. Leave a comment on the video, right? That really helps us out. Also, when you guys watch the old videos, leave a comment on the old video. I, I have one guy who's seriously helping us win this contest and he's going through every single video. He's leaving comments on all the videos so I know at least he is out you know watching the old videos not that that is helping or giving him an advantage but it's nice to see and then that'll help us all uh, to reach the goal so a family can be blessed with a generational gift of a log cabin okay you have to register to win the link is the first comment under this video it's also in the description of this video and if you follow us on any other social media we have it everywhere so you have to find that link to register you cannot just be a subscriber okay you have to register at the link so that way we can randomly pick one of you guys and get a hold of you uh, with the information you provide so that's it i'm out of here i got some more stuff to do some really cool videos are coming up and we want to thank you guys for always tuning in. And if you've got any questions, leave them down below. Thanks a lot.